Hello there, this is Transformers Fan G138, and I'm here with a video view of Tron Legacy Classic Style Vehicle uh, Light Cycle here. And I am kidding, this is actually Transformers Cr Generations Chromia. Um, however, she really does look like a light cycle from Tron. And uh, right down to having the uh, clear pieces between the wheels, both front and back. Which is kind of cool, but I'm kind of surprised Hasbro is not getting sued over this. No ideas, Disney. Anyway, um, we get a cool kickstand here in vehicle mode. Uh, these spin okay. They're not great, but they do the job. Um, and because of the thickness of the wheels, you can actually have her displayed like this. Although a little... Um, not great the balance she does have decent um so we get a lot of paint apps here all around overall i think this is pretty cool the uh light cycle look uh design very classics like um and if you wanted to you actually do have a way to turn the front wheel which is kind of cool you know anyway nice autobot symbol up front um, although in the original cartoon, she never had an alt mode, um, it, it, it feels like this is a very Chromia, like, alt mode. Um, and I feel like the comic book design was based on the toy, not the other way around, but it's still pretty cool. She does come with one pistol, um, always neat to have. Um, although in the back of the box shows her with two pistols. Um, <laughs> however, in all the promo, she shows with two pistols. But on the back, there's a nice little sticker. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a nice little sticker that says additional weapon not included. It's literally a sticker. It's kind of funny. And if you look closely enough, it is the uh, second blaster that comes with RC. <laughs> Which I'll be reviewing. <coughs> Excuse me. Comes with RC, which I will be reviewing next. Now, if we look in here, we got some thrusters. Nice molded detail. Pretty cool. Even the cutouts here for it. I uh, got this cool, like, uh, light back here. Painted, of course. But it's cool tail light. But overall, I think vehicle mode is pretty awesome. However, we'll notice some details and designs that belong to someone else. So, kickstand works just fine. A weapon, although it almost seems like they tried and failed, but this weapon would have fit perfectly right here. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't get this to work. I mean, like, the cutout is even there for the handle. This and it almost looks like it should peg in, but there's nothing to peg into. So it, all, it looks like they just needed to remold the gun just ever so slightly so that that could peg in there. I'm a little disappointed in that, but overall, it's not terrible. If you wanted to, you can clip the gun to the outside of the leg here. Pretty cool. So... Uh, set the gun aside, and we'll do some transformation. So, first thing you won't want to do is kind of just move things, pop these out on each side. If these lock in the legs. Once the legs are down, you can bring these this whole assembly down, and down again. That forms the legs. Now, these legs should look familiar, and I will get to that look in a minute. Up here, we want to untab these. There's a panel here that moves out of the way. It kind of snaps down over the hands. I'm not doing very well at it. All right, so we'll come up to the front for a minute here. Bring these forward. We'll snap this up. Kind of rotate that out of the way, 
And then we'll bring these up. That frees the hands. Uh, these nice side panels cover the hands fairly nicely. And I do like the underguards of the hands. That's kind of cool. Something you don't always see. And once the hands are out, you can bring this back down. This can come up. And to bring up the head, we just rotate down this piece. And then we should be able to move this down, back and down. And fold the wheel right behind. Now we have a weird Michael Bay looking uh, or Chromia, right? No. And that's the downside of using wood blocks screwed together as your camera holder. Ah, uh, right. Okay, so. That's just mostly in robot mode. We'll just bring these back down. Come down here, snap apart the legs. We can bring this out of the way so we can actually have some more leg maneuverability. We want to rotate this around at the same time we rotate the foot forward. This should be also a very familiar gimmick for transformation. And I will get to that in a moment. I keep pushing it off, but for good reason. So, and here we have Chromia in robot mode. Um, the one thing I don't like is how the wheel has to hang off one side or the other side. Or straight back. That I don't like. That I don't like. Actually, I don't like this back as pack assembly at all. I wish this could fold down into here. Or I wish this had some way of turning this piece and hiding it back here. Because there's plenty of space for that wheel. Like, if I took measurement here, that wheel would fit inside there, no problem. But, unfortunately, they didn't do that. So it hangs off the back. Oh well. Um, then you have this cool uh, ball and socket joint leg with a hinge knee, which, because this is flexible, can go beyond 90 degrees. Um, we got a nice ball and socket joint hand. Very cool to see that. Um, we have a ball and socket joint wrist. Some are a little tighter than others. Ball and socket and hinged shoulder. But these collar pieces get in the way. Hmm. This looks familiar. I wonder why. And then a ball and socket joint head. So why do all these parts look familiar but different? Oh, plus blaster fits in hand. I just, you know, there's something like, it almost reminds me very closely of Prime RC. Um, then maybe that's because it is essentially Prime RC. So, let's take a look at the legs. Yeah, the most of the leg has a different mold to it, but the kneecap is very, very the same. Get a closer look here. Same kneecap. Hmm. Let's look at the outside of the upper leg here. Huh, this blue piece looks the exact same place this cutout is. Hmm, let's take a look at in the side of the thigh here. Huh, that's the same part, except this is extended down into this. Hmm. Interesting. Now let's look at the chest plates here. Hmm. They're using the same chest plate. And, wait, wait a second. That's the same gimmick, transformation gimmick, on both of them. Huh. This is a really recycled toy. And shoulders. Uh, lower arms. I'm sure if we can pop these off, that we'll see that this underarm is exactly the same too. Um, difference, we actually have the same hands. So the difference is in some of the molding and some extra pieces thrown on to make it look not like RC. Granted, I think they do a decent job. It These two do not look the same, but do at the same time. So I think they did a decent job.
So I've been through the articulation, looks of the figure, um, very G1-esque head, also matches with the current comic. And I would show off her next to Windblade, except Windblade is downstairs on my Christmas tree. So, sorry about that. Maybe in another review I'll pull them aside and show them off together. So, pretty neat. We have a pretty cool looking Chromia figure here. And just for old time's sake. Next to Ironhide. What do we think? Look good together? I think so. I just wish Ironhide looked better. Eh. What are you gonna do? At least it's Ironhide, right? So we get fun, fun, fun. Pretty cool toy. If you have any questions, please post a comment down below, and I'll be glad to answer that for you. If you have any requests for video reviews that I haven't done, um, I have a collection video. It's a little outdated, but um, anything I've added since, I've done a review. Except for Metroplex, because I cannot find a surface to actually do a review on. Overall, very cool looking um, figure. And the only thing I have left is the ranking. And my computer went to sleep. Give me one second. Okay. So Chromia gets a 7.3 out of 10. Then again, this guy probably gets a 4 out of 10. So that's a good example. And that is not bad at all. I like this one a lot better without the wings that RC has here. Um, even though she has that weird wheel hanging off the back, it's not nearly as bad as these wings. And the backside here includes these clips, almost like it's going to be used for something else, and something else is going to be clipped in there. That it just the vibe I get. I don't think these can clip on here. Plus the pegs on the wheel, wheel, legs are gone. Oh, well, they fit loosely, but you, I guess you could put that in there. Um, it almost seems like the way this is designed with these jut outs, because they don't. It almost feels like something's gonna peg in there. And maybe it's something that came with a different uh, figure or something. Um, for all I know, it could be the gun. But either way, it looks like something actually fits in there. It, it just looks very suspicious. It doesn't look like a normal cutout for uh, spacing. Either that or Hasbro's getting really good at hiding those. Um, overall... Pretty cool. Um, yeah, not bad. I, I recommend this for anybody who likes the female Autobot characters who have not previously got them. This is the closest to the Generation 1 one we have. And a lot of people are saying, well, third-party ones are better. And that might be true. The third-party ones are also way more expensive. And... I like to say Hasbro is working within a fairly decent budget for these. The third party are doing very specific ones. Also, when you buy a third party uh, figure, you are taking Hasbro's ability to put in more effort into theirs. Some of Hasbro's actually, in my opinion, have been better than the third parties. So I'm not using this as a lecture. If you like to buy the third party figures, great, go ahead. Um, I, in fact, have a couple for the uh, big guy. See, I don't mind so mind the add-ons because then you have to buy the original Hasbro figure to do it. And I feel like that's a bit better for because um, the others are making money on something Hasbro already owns. Yeah, there's legal ways around it, but again, I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying be cautious, be aware. But overall, very cool figure. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.